good evening. We are starting session number two of this last week. We are going to continue with the topics that we were developing. Um, tonight, we are going to end the topic of the simple path. Um, we are going to start a new topic, but in this moment, we are going to end this um, this first topic with some exercises in which we are going to um, complete. We are going to uh, put into practice all the information that we have about the simple test that is a very easy topic because we have some information or some previous knowledge uh, of this topic, so it is not like. We don't know anything about this sense and the way in which we are going to create sentences. So we are going to start seeing the exercises or the um, sentence that I have for you. And we are going to change the, um, the verb into its uh, correct form because we have irregular verbs and we have a regular verb. So we're going to start seeing the sentence and then correcting them. Um, after the exercise, the first two parts of the exercise, we're going to have like um, a practice in which you are going to read the two things or the two images that I sent to you to the group. That uh, The first one is the cat and the orange. And the second one is about Harry Potter. But in this case, if you are going to do it as a group, I will make, I guess, two groups in which you are going to um, apply all the knowledge that you have um, about this topic. So in that case, you're going to read the, um, the phrases that you have in the story. And if you know, if you notice, you have some uh, verbs that you need to correct into have, and we have regular and irregular verbs. So in the exercise, as a group, you're going to correct the verbs. But first, we are going to see the sentences that we are going to correct the verbs into regular and irregular verbs, and then we are going to have a deep practice. So we are going to start with the first part of the exercise, and then we are going to talk about uh, other senses that we are going to um, know the uses, uh, the structures, and all of that. In this case, we are not going to talk about past, we are going to talk about future. So let me share this document in which I have with the exercise that you are going to correct or help me to correct the tense of the verb. So we have here the document in which we have the exercises and we have two parts. We have 12 and 12 sentences uh, for each part of this uh, exercise, and we have the first part that is a uh, regular verb. In this case, we are just using a regular verb. And in the second part, that are the other 12, this one, we have the irregular verb. So, what we are going to do is to correct the verb. We are going to correct the verb in these sentences. So, let's see. We have number one, and it says the people, and we have a uh, verb enjoy the party last weekend. In past, how can we write enjoyed in past? Remember that these ones are regular verbs. Enjoyed in past. Enjoyed. Ah, good. Enjoyed. Nice. We have the first one. So in this case, we have the people enjoyed 
the party last weekend. Number two, the children, and we have the verb on, the grandparents two days ago. On, in this case, is not so, uh, talking about uh, the cell phone or um, the device. In this case, it's talking about the action or calling someone. So in that case, on in past, How can we write it? You can also write uh, the, the verbs in the past, and that's okay. So, phone in the past. Phone. Ah, good. Phone. Nice. Then we have, we plan a trip to England last year. Plan in past? Plan. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So in this case, plan. yes. In this case, we're uh, going to double some consonants or not. Double Planet. N. Ah, double N. That's good. Okay. The family stay at home yesterday. A stay in past? Stay. Stay. Ah, good. Then, mom fry fish and chips for our lunch on Sunday. Fry in past? Fry it. Good, Brian. Good, amazing. The teacher arrived an hour ago. Arrived in class? Oh, right. Right. Good, nice. The students organized a picnic last week. Organized in class? Organized. Uh huh. Then we have number eight, the children close their books after the lesson. Close in class. Close in. Close in. Good, amazing. Number nine, John invite his neighbors to a party. Invite in class. Invite it. Ah, nice. Invite Good. It rained all day yesterday. Rain in class. Brain. Brain. Okay, brain. We stop in the shopping center all morning. Stop in past. Stop. stop. In this case, we are going to double some consonants or not. Double P. Double P. Double P. Good. Double P. Then we have number 12. Walter and Catherine visited the circus last month. This is in past. Good. Now, we have here the regular one. Now, we are going to use the irregular one. So, we are going mm -hmm. to see this one. So, we have somebody break this window last night. Break into past. Broke. In that case, it's broke. Good. Somebody broke this window last night. I go to the cinema, but I not enjoy the film. Go into past. When. 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 A negative. What we are going to use? When. We need an auxiliary in this case. Ah, we did. Uh huh. We did not. What? Well, we did not. Uh -huh. We did not enjoy. In this case, remember that when we are using the uh, negative in past, we are going to use the auxiliary. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Now, I be angry because they be late. I be. What is the uh, correct form of the verb to be in past for I? I was. I, I was, was angry. 
Uh -huh. I was angry because they were late. They were late. Good. Where? Mm -hmm. Amazing. Now, I never hit anybody in my life. The verb hit in past. It again. In this case, it's the same. Just the um, the context is imperfect. The value part is the same. Now, I buy a ticket to Paris at the airport. Buy in pass. Both. Both. Ah, Both. Good. 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 In this one, we have three. He leaves the hotel, take a taxi, and drive to the station. Leave in he left, 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 good. Take. Took. Talk. Took. Good, okay. good. Okay. And drive. Draw. Draw, good. That's good, that's good. Now, this house cost a lot of money in 1998. Cost in past? Cost. Cost. It's the same again. We have number eight. Philip made no haste to move from where he sits. We have two. Make in past? Make. 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 Good. And sit? Sit. 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 <laughs> Sad, the good. Sad. Sad. Uh -huh. Then we have again two verbs. I ring the bell, but nobody be at home. I ring. Ring in past. Rang. Rang. Wow. I rang the bell, but nobody. The telephone was. Yes. Was. Good, what at home? Number 10, almost the end. Who else to go to the cinema with Mike yesterday evening? In this case, uh, well. uh, ah, good. This one is a question. Who else when? Number 11, Stephanie Mayer write great books about vampires. Rose. 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 Good. Bro. And the last one. In summer, I go for long walks after breakfast. Go in fact? When? 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 Good. Okay. So, in this case, we have the two when. Yes, when. We have the two um, type of verbs in these exercises. We have the regular and the irregular ones. So, now I'm going to divide uh, this group into a small group. And I, uh, let me stop this one. So I will divide the group into, let me see, yes, into groups. The so group A or, or group one, and depending on the name of the room, it's going to read the cat and the orange. And the group two or room B, it's going to read the um the paragraph about Harry Potter. What are you going to do? You're going to read the um the sentence that are in the stories, and you are going to correct the uh, verb like we are doing with the exercises. For example, we have in the in the story of the cat and the orange the first sentence, and it says, "Select the cat," and we have the a verb in there that it says, Felix the cat go into the kitchen and jump up onto the table. What are you going to do is to change the verb. So you are going to say, Felix the cat went into the kitchen and, and you are going to correct the other verb. So we are going to divide the group and you can decide which of the participants is the first to read some sentences about the a story, or you can just 
very the verbs in the correct form of the past. So we are going to do two rooms. And you need to enter the rooms right now. Okay, now. So all of you uh, have a message or an invitation in which you need to click to go to the room. It doesn't appear to me. Let me see. I'm going to send again. Let me, let me see. I will move to this one. Now, sigue sin aparecerle, Francisco. Okay. Javier, Rodrigo, and Manuel. Please. El, de, el de Harry Potter, ¿eh? ¿verdad? Sí. Yes. Okay. ¿Lo ver? ¿Are you can see? Sí. Yes. Yes. Ok. So, he lived with his aunt, his uncle, and his cousin. In He not was happy living there because they not love him. ¿Quién puede continuar? Sí. Sería el segundo párrafo. Oh, okay. Get, creo que es, he got, got he a letter from Howard School of Witchcraft and Wizard Drive. He went and he stood in there. He was. He, bowed. he was. Uh, he was. He was a new student there. He bought a new pet too. And oh, its name. What? It was as well. I didn't confirm it. Okay. Its, its name, name was Edwin. Was Edwin. But, but his uncle, creo que este es el mismo como es negativo, not one. No one said. No one said. In this case, remember that you are using the auxiliary. He didn't want. He didn't want. 
No, you don't want. We found a wizard in the family and took her to a lonely island. Next. Four knives, a loaf of bread, and an orange. Here, race, no sé cómo se, no sé el, el pasado, race sería. His poem. Uh -huh. and that, that, that is no. Oh. Uh -huh. rolled, uh -huh. Okay, rolled the orange until it fall, falls. Aquí es el pasado es fall, es falls o es yeah. es otro porque es fold yeah. onto oh, the floor. Okay. Yeah. Then yeah. he yeah. okay, then he got yeah. no get. She got there got down, down and started Stop. and started playing Stop. with the orange. He rolled mm -hmm. um roll it and around the floor mm -hmm. and the has such fun fun then. Van a disculpar, pero estoy tratando de ver lo mejor posible. <laughs> Mario okay. Felix Human come okay. escape. Okay. Okay. In the kitchen. He okay. smiled uh, at Felix. Then he picked pick up Seria. Ay, aquí no me acuerdo el pasado de pick. Picket. Picket. Bueno, pick it up the orange and he decided to eat it. He put, put, I guess, put it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Put it, put uh, it bake on the table. Take a knife out the drawer oh, and a cut, yes. cut the orange in two. I don't know if you know this, but cats are really curious. Felix jumped back onto the table and looked at the orange. When he saw what was inside, his eye opened with why with the surprise he think uh, think is el pasado is oh. okay so, so, so it was so. well it was beautiful shining sparkling orange triangles it looked like a, a huge cat's eyes felix was so what so Surprised that the simple orange ball has so much to he to eat. Then he pushed his nose and the orange and and juk. No sé qué quiere decir juk. I think yes. It's like <laughs> yeah. a sound when you find something raw, something that you don't like. It's like you. Okay. okay. God, he is an uh, nostrils and. And make el pasado de make is made made mm -hmm. and make him sneezer. He uh, not, did not not like it that that at all. He quickly leaped off the table and running and run yeah. running out in the garden as fast as he could. Okay, Ay, good. Perdón, estoy, me, no sé, estoy medio no lectura, me Sorry. I understand you completely. <laughs> Thank you. So we are going to read and we are going to talk about the exercise. So I think the other group is ending too.
So right now we are just waiting for one participant to come to the main session. But the rooms are going to end in four seconds. So we're going just to wait right now. So it was kind of challenging to read this kind of exercises because in some uh, moments we um, forgot uh, the the path of the of the verb but it's normal in that case it's like what is the path how can i pronounce that no worry it is the process so we have two parts two readings in this case we have the card and the orange that is kind of uh, funny uh, the reaction of the card when he is playing with an orange and then we have one about harry potter that is like a paragraph about the story so we're just going to make some uh, reviews of the stories or the two uh, videos that we have. So in the card and the orange that was um, part of the group number one was, um, in this case, it's talking about Felix. Felix is a cat um, that is in the kitchen and uh, he finds um, some elements in the kitchen. He finds to play three cups uh, for a night. And he find a lot of bread in an orange. And that orange calls its attention. So he played with the orange and he was having so much fun with the orange. And when he was playing with the orange, Mario, who is the owner of Felix, then in the paragraph we can agree, Felix human that we can translate El Humano de Felix. So he is the owner, he smiled of Felix because he was saying him playing with the orange. Um, he picked up the orange and decided that he wanted to eat the orange and he carried that orange. So the cards are very curious as it says in the story and he went to see what's inside the orange and he was like um how can we say it he was kind of interested about the things that the orange has inside and it says that um it was beautiful shining sparkling uh, and he had some triangles but he doesn't or in this case he didn't like the smell it was too um, hard for it because it's very, very sensible. And then he went to the, uh, to the garden. So that was the story that we were um, like correcting the verb. And the other one that is uh, the, the paragraph that has the group number two that was about Harry Potter, that is like a very, very interesting book and a uh, very, very famous book. So we have that Harry Potter, and in this case, is talking about uh, who is this boy. So it says that um, he was a very special boy. He was a young wizard, because the story talks about wizard, witches, the magic, and all of the things. Uh, it was like describing the things, uh, describing the color of the hair, the color of the eyes. Um, also, it's telling that he has a scar on the forehead. Uh, it it tells something about his background. It's telling that he lives with his aunt and his uncle. Um, and it's saying that he was not happy in that place because they didn't love Harry. Um, he got a letter from Howard that is full of witchcraft and a wizardry. And he was a, a new student there, but he was very, very famous at that time. Um, it's also saying that um, he has a pet that is an owl, that his name is Hedwig. Um, then it's talking about Hedwig, that is the one that rescued him from the family, and all of the things that we need to know about Harry Potter that we can find in the book number one. So, those were the exercises that we have for the topic that was 
um, present simple. Now we are going to talk about future. We are going to end the simple part here with the reading. And now we are going to learn more about the future. So I'm going to share again the screen because I have an image that I want you to see because it's related to the topic. So we have here the topic that is future tenses. We're going to talk about the future tenses. And if you can see the image, we have four future uh, tenses in this case. We have the future simple, we have the future continuous, we have the future perfect, and we have the future perfect continuous. So as in present and in, and in past, we have four type of uh, structures that we are going to use for each time. Four in past, four in present, and four in future. So we are going to start with future simple, and we have an example that it says, I will live in Barcelona. So in that case, we can see that it's very simple because we are just going to use will. But remember that we also have the structure of the going to in future. In that case, is when we are talking something that is kind of, um, in this case, it's something that is may, maybe really close to happen. So we are going to start with this topic because we are we have a lot of information about this future tense. So at the beginning of the um, of the topic, I have um, a phrase that is related to the topic, but it says the future is whatever you make it, so make it a good one. So we are talking about future, so in this case, it says the future is whatever you make it. You are the owner of your life and you are the owner of your decisions. And obviously, you are the owner of the future. So make it a, a good one doing the things you love. So just like the past and present tense, there is more than one future tense in English that we uh, see in the spring. This um, change depending on the function and what we want to say. We're going to look at four future tenses, the future simple, the future continuous, the future perfect, and the future perfect continuous. And we're going to learn how and when to use them. Um, I think I will send you, maybe I will send you a video that we can find in this kind of pages that explain everything about the tenses. Um, and I will send you a video that is like using TV series or TV shows to explain these topics. And it's kind of interesting seeing that kind of video because uh, we can learn what we are entertaining ourselves. So we have the future tenses. Then we have the number one. And it's future simple. And it says, let's start with the basics. The future simple is used to talk about a time later than now and can be used in a lot of different ways. A time later than now. Different ways. So we have the full one. And we have some specification about the form of this uh, sense. So I'm going to, let me see, this one. So we have the first one and it says, it's made up of the verb will or want, that want is in negative, place the base infinitive verb that in this case we are not going to use to at the beginning of the verb.
Ok, tenemos la primera parte de la forma de esta eh, de Future Simple. Vamos a utilizar el will o el want, que es el, el, el negativo de, de will, y vamos a utilizar la forma infinitiva del verbo. En este caso, no vamos a utilizar el to, que sería la forma base, ¿verdad? Sin ningún cambio. En este, en este caso, solo vamos a utilizar el infinitivo del verbo sin el to para completar este tipo de oración. Bien. Because will is a modal verb, it doesn't change depending on the person doing the action. So, and in this case, we are not going to apply the rules for the third person uh, because in this case, uh, model verbs are not like the other verbs in which we need to change the form depending on the person that is uh, doing the action. In this case, it is not necessary and it's the same for all the pronouns that we have. So, in this case, we are not going to change anything of uh, the model verb. We can use contractions and we have the example. And we have wheel. And with the contraction, we have aisle. Because in the negative, We can also use will not for more emphasis. So in this case, it's not necessary that we use want if we don't want to use it. In this case, we can use will not or want, and it's, uh, it's okay. It's not like we have just a specific form to use the negative. We can use both if we feel like using a both a structure or both a form of the negative. And it says that want is more common in speech. You know that um, we have like two kinds of using the words. We have the speaking one and we have the writing one. In some cases, we use a more an structure when we are talking and we are using the other when we are writing because in some cases we need to sound uh, more serious, more polite, more respectful when we are writing. Uh, because it's uh, like we are working in some documents, in a book, in, um, in, I don't know, in something that is something serious. So in that case, um, it's very common to use this sign of construction and a lot of things when we are talking because it sounds more natural and we try to um, like shorten the words because we need to be more fluent when we are talking. But when we are writing, we need to add all of the words that we need for that document. Then it says in short answers, we say yes, will or no want. And in this case, it's talking about the pronoun.
So I remember that in English, it's necessary to add the structure that we are using or the tenses uh, that we are using or the words that we are using uh, in that moment and to make the answers or the responses. Because it's like the structure that we are following with all the tenses and um, it is different from Spanish in which we are just using one or two words. In this case, we need to do it because it's, it's the correct form of answering. So we have las formas del el futuro simple. Eh, ya sabemos que utilizamos el will o el want con la base infinitiva del verbo. Eh, como es un modal, no cambia dependiendo del de pronombre. Es lo mismo para todos los pronombres. Eh, tenemos las eh, contractions, eh, que no es necesario escribir toda la palabra. Eh, en las negativas también podemos utilizar will not. No solamente want. Want es más común en la, en la forma en la que hablamos cuando eh, conversamos que en la forma escrita. Y en las respuestas cortas solo vamos a utilizar yes, I will, yes, you will, yes, she will, o no, I want, no, you want, and no, he wants. And that's the short answer. And we have some examples of a passive a sentence, a negative sentence, and questions. So, and in this case, I need to add. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can find that. Yes, I have one, two, three. Hey. Okay, so we have here examples. And we have positive. We have negative. And we have questions. So we are going to use the subject or the pronoun. I you, he, she, it, we, and they. Then we are going to use will. That is the structure that we are following. So in this case, I will write the structure. It is really simple. We have the pronouns or the subject in this case. Subject plus will plus, and we are going to add the Base infinitive. Base infinitive. And in some cases, we can add a complement. So we are going to add wheel. And they will. Now we are going to add a deeper. In this case, we are going to use travel for all of the topics. So in this case, uh, remember that uh, we are using uh, this one that is um, that is the model verb. So in this case, we are not going to change the verb that is an infinitive because uh, we are using something that is modifying the subject. So it's not necessary to apply the rules for the verb. So in this case, we are not going to use S at the end of the verb or ES or EAS for the verb. Como estamos utilizando los modales y cuando utilizamos auxiliares, modales y todo ese tipo de eh, ayudas, no vamos a cambiar la forma del verbo, no vamos a eh, agregar la regla, ¿verdad? Porque ya estamos modificando, así que no es necesario 
cambiar la estructura de los verbos. Now, we are going with the negative one, but in this case, we are going to use want. We are not going to use will not because we are going to make the, um, like the comparison. I want travel. You want travel. And they want some. So we have the negative sentence. And now we are going to create the question. In this case, remember that when we are using um, verb to be WH, well, in this case, it's not WH uh, words because they are at the beginning all the time. But when we are using auxiliary and when we are using um, mobile verbs or verb to be, we are going to change the form of the sentence and we are going to write in this case we at the beginning of the sentence to make it a question so in this case we write will then the subject will i travel with you We should travel and we're they. So in this case, we are just uh, creating like very, very simple uh, sentence and questions because we are just using one um, example to create all of the other sentences. So we are going to see the uses of this one that is the future simple. What are the uses for this one and some examples for the uses. So we have the use number one that I want to do it like this. So we have instant or spontaneous decision. And we have the example and it says, I'm hungry. I think I'll. make a sandwich so in this case it's like a instant decision because we are feeling hungry and we decide that we are going to do something so in this case i'm hungry i think i'll make a sandwich in some time in the future then we have a number two that is future prediction based on a belief And we have the example, and it says, I'm sure you will pass the test. So in this case, oh, in this case, we're saying that in this uh, use, is based on something that we think it will happen uh, we have like two options for this kind of 
uh, uses. One is that that thing is going to happen. And the other one is that it is not going to happen because we are not sure that it's something real or something that is certain. So in that case, we can say, I'm sure you will pass the test, but we don't know what is going to happen in the future. Then we have use number three. And it says promises. And we have the example. And it says, I won't tell anyone your secret. Then the next use, and it says, offers. We have the sample, and it says, I will carry your best for you. Next one, a request. And we have, would you tell Henry a call? Then threat. And it says, if you do that again, I will tell mom. And the last one is future facts. I will be back later tonight. So in this case, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uses for the simple future. So we have, uh, para, esta, uh, sí, para esta forma del futuro, tenemos un par de usos, que es donde nosotros vamos a utilizar esta estructura. Tenemos decisiones instantáneas o espontáneas que salen de la nada, ¿verdad? que podemos estar sintiendo alguna cosa y decidimos hacer alguna acción. Luego tenemos eh, eh, predicciones futuras basadas en algo que nosotros creemos que va a pasar. Luego tenemos promesas, ofertas, eh, también tenemos como solicitudes, amenazas y eh, cosas que van a pasar en el future side. Uh, in that case, we are going to use the simple future for those uh, uses that we have in uh, this list. Also, we can use for this one, the uh, this one that is shall. And it says that we can use shall instead of will for future time reference with I and we. However, it is slightly more formal. Tenemos shall, que también lo podemos utilizar en lugar del will, cuando estamos hablando de referencias del tiempo futuro, pero más que todo con el pronombre I y con el pronombre we. Y es mucho más formal que el we. In this case, it's when we are writing it sign off, in which we are going to use this kind of formal thing. And we have an example. And it says, we shall 
never forget this beautiful day. It's like we're saying we're, we we will never forget this beautiful day. It's the same, so we are just going to use shall instead of will. It is also common to use shall in question to make offers, suggestions, or ask for advice. And we have the example. And it says, Shall I carry this bag for you? Then we have another example. Shall, shall I open the window? And the last one is first. Well, so I tell Mary about the broken day. So, um, we're going to end this session with the future simple. Tomorrow we are going to talk about the other three that we have left. So we are going to continue talking about future in the next session. And we are just having two sessions more to end this, um, this module. So we are going to see each other tomorrow and we are going to continue with the future topics. So have a really good night and see you tomorrow. See you. Good, see night. You. good night. Good night. Good night. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.